Welcome back to our Melted Reality, aka what the hell's going on around here. I've always liked the words, the more you see, the less you know. Even though I'm strong in my convictions, I really don't know. I'm just looking at what everybody else is looking at and with boots on the ground and videos from other people in other places, not necessarily connected to the melt. But as far as me, I can't find any other direction to go because this is all I see and everywhere I go and I'm seeing the same thing. There's just bricks everywhere. Melt, above ground, below ground, everywhere. So I don't want to ramble too much and get right into what this video is about. I recently saw a couple videos from a lady named Cheryl. A couple of sites in the Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada area. Just incredible pictures and boots on the ground that people just don't normally see. So I decided to just let Cheryl commentate her own stuff through most of this with a little bit of me in it but I promise she'd rather much hear what she has to say than me so anyway here's a few clips and I will link both of the videos in the description everything box. shows much signs love. of an extreme heat event which is uh, it's gonna be very hard to listen to Site. And as you can see, this place not only place is littered with bricks and on the Reddit, there are thousands and thousands of bricks. So I decided to go explore the area a little more and I came across this amazing find. That rock didn't get stuck there. It's turning into rock. together and these are also about the same size that length and look at this it's just a, a melted goopy mess <laughs> sucker was heavy as heck and again just showing more of the melt I have I have so much footage. See that? That's the hand marks. Handmade marks, I should say. Here, this is a website that sells historic bricks that the absence of a frog or a stamp is a rare feature. Now, in this city, they've also found Chinese coins dated to 1700 AD. And when we look at the write-up, it says that the Chinese immigrant workers would wear these coins around their waist, but no one's explaining why they were wearing at that time would be 200 year old coins because this was right at the turn of the century. Add to that that in 1962 they found this bell that had no identifying marks and if they were digging a 10-foot trench 
that and they found it at least six feet below the surface and because they always speak in half truths if they're saying at least six feet then I'm thinking it was likely closer to 10 foot deep so they're attributing it to a train crash that had happened in 1913 and they say that you know it just got buried over time and forgotten but that doesn't seem very plausible does it so these mysteries are all starting to add up here what I love is these brick lines coming through on the rock very clearly along with this arch and perfectly straight mortar lines coming around the corner this one is very straight very amazing and of course we have this arch but you can really see how square so based on that picture you can see that it doesn't account for all these thousands of bricks now I had to borrow this picture because our tide doesn't go out far so most of the bricks you're seeing in this photo are actually covered by water most of the time and in the right you can see how they look like they're laid out almost like paving stones and we have every variety we have our mystery handmade bricks from the 16th 17th century we have some Canadian bricks and we even have these Scottish bricks that says Glenboig on them what in tarnation is going on here if you're thinking like this is legit architecture I'm not really sure what to tell you unless you have like a PhD in boulders and popcorn rocks. This brick is so cooked out that it's the iron in it is making it look almost like early granite. And I think, look at this brick. You th and that's half turning. And these bricks have actually turned out of the concrete so the points are pointing at us. You know, this whole thing was brick. It's all popcorned out now, but it really was brick. It's just cooked to an absolute shine. Oh, oui. And the concrete itself is melting. So you have two actions going on there. So down here, there's, look at these bricks, all twisty, turvy. How does it do that? How do the bricks lift like that? And they have this old plank of wood um, secured in against it. And it's almost, there you go again, another brick. They didn't, they didn't lay it like this. I believe this got cooked out and these rocks they didn't make this base with these rocks. These are bricks that were cooked and turned into rocks. Look at this, this freaking mortar line in this. It's amazing. It's a perfectly straight mortar line. That's the drone you hear in the background. Now this stone, you can see butt ends of bricks all in here. Half cooked out bricks, brick granite. <laughs> Now this, I couldn't discern whether that was a tree, wood, or metal. And I think it's melted metal. And the reason I say that is because, look up here, this is bent metal in there. So I just had to show you the coolest melt that I have ever seen. It's so light. Look at the viscous holes. You can still see the 14 in it. C14 in it. So here's a Scottish brick that she found. Now you think to yourself, 
why are they shipping bricks all the way across the pond when there's plenty of supposed brick factories all around the area? I made multiple trips. So whether I'm right or wrong, I've collected all the evidence and I'm handing it over to you, my jury of peers. There's times when I don't know if I should explain from my point of view or just let you, the audience, just sit back and let it all in from your own perspective. I'm just going to let these images roll. And thank you again, Cheryl, for these phenomenal boots on the ground. Much love, everyone.